Masabe! What's up, everybody? Ah, we are in Phoenix, Arizona, or that area. Uh, right now, uh, westbound slash northbound, whatever you want to call it, on uh, Loop 202 on the west end of town. Uh, I was uh, just crossed over the Salt River right there. If you want to find it on the map, it's very easy to find. Uh, just look for that big loop that goes around the west and south side of, uh, of uh, the Phoenix area and then find right where the river, uh, where it crosses the river. Uh, very easy to spot river, or pretty easy to spot, and that's where I'm at. Uh, we're on our way to the uh, Tolleson Drop Yard right now to uh, retrieve the, the load that I brought into the yard from uh, from Lamar, California yeah, last night. Uh, what happened was, uh, uh, now I'm back in my own truck, so we're back in business here with regular YouTubing. And uh, so I ended up picking up the reload in the loader truck took the loader truck back to the, I mean, uh, you know, actually went, went to the drop, our San Bernardino job yard, picked up an empty trailer, went up to Lemoore to pick up the load, and then went back to my house to finish my shift. Uh, I think I got to the, yeah, dude, you should probably be in the right lane if you're doing that slow. Alright, uh, I'm getting off at this exit right here, so I'm going to have to let this, uh, come on, dude, get on your gas pedal. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is Buckeye Road. We're going to get off here and then just go west on Buckeye. It'll take us right over to the drop yard. Anyway, yeah, I had, when I got home with about an hour left on my set, on my uh, my shift clock, drive clock, whatever it was, I know I was just about in my area when, uh, when, I, when I got the alert on my Qualcomm saying I had one hour left. Alright, so anyway, I did a 10 hour break there, and then the next shift I ran from the, from the house to here, yeah, about 350 mile drive. My wife followed me uh, all the way there, you know, in my car, and yeah, we ended up dropping the trailer there, it was uh, not a very fun time to get that trailer in there either, because for some stupid reason, a uh, Sierra England driver well, I, I can't really say it was really a stupid reason. The, uh, anyway, there was a Sierra England driver. They decided to drop their trailer sideways uh, right in front of our part of the drop yard. And there wasn't shit for room there to, uh, to get my trailer dropped. The only reason I was able to get it into the spot that I put it in was because the spot next to it was vacant. So, I mean, because I had no option but to uh, go in there at a bad angle. Come on, dude. You got a green light. What are you waiting for? Alright, so... Yeah, I think... I don't know if anyone would have been able to get a trailer into the spot next to me. Uh, possibly a blindside offset. You know, from the, the side where I normally come from when I'm, uh, when I'm bringing a trailer into there. It's a nice bike. But either way, it was like, uh, yeah, that should, that should have been parked somewhere else. I don't know, about, maybe the lot was full and they just had nowhere else to put it and they had to drop it. And I can't sit there and blame them, but at the same time, I I guess I can, too. Uh, I don't know, somewhere better than that. Maybe in front of your own trailers or something or whatever, so one of your own people has to move it when they... Go put their, uh, go pull their own trailer out or something. And if there was, uh, there was uh, between the front of my tractor and the side of the England trailer, uh, I don't know if there was uh, enough room for much more than a full tractor length. Yeah, so yeah, maybe about 25 feet of space or something like that between the nose of the loaner truck that I was uh, using to put it in there and the side of the trailer. And uh, yeah, it's, 
Anyway, all right, so uh, we're on Buckeye. We're gonna uh, go to the Tolson Yard, which is at Thermal King West. Like I said, Sierra England shares that yard with us, uh, as do some other people. Uh, there was a Pam trailer in our part of the yard uh, last night. Currently at 71st Avenue. Uh, it's after 83rd. It's in between 83rd and 91st, uh, I think, is the start of the two streets. And it's in between, so that's where we'll be. All right, uh, on the way over here, man, what is wrong with people? So we're, you know, my wife's following me. Actually, our daughter's with my was is with my wife, and you know she followed me all the way. And actually, she got to a point where I was gonna have to stop for fuel anyway, and I also suggested she, uh, I suggested she make a stop at uh, the gas station in Chiriaco Summit in California on I-10. Uh, where they can, uh, yeah, where she can feed our daughter, you know, get some ice cream or shakes or whatever, and um, yeah, and I would meet up with them there and get, you know, grab the shake from my wife on the way there. They could use the restroom, whatever. Uh, I was gonna have to stop for fuel anyway um, before I could get into Arizona. So yeah, I, was, I told them just go ahead and run ahead, and so they get all there. Yeah, they get up there, and uh, when I get there, they're uh, they're sitting on the bench right outside the the front door to the Chevron station there. And so yeah, I, I go inside to go use the restroom, come back out, we're talking. Yeah. All right, we get to talking, and then uh, at some point in time while we're sitting there talking. Some guy kind of randomly comes up from behind me and starts talking to our daughter. Starts uh, getting all preachy to her about God and the Bible and all this and whatever. And it's like, okay, whatever. It's, uh, you know, in a way I was annoyed because, like, first, that's that's our problem to worry about, not his. Now, when our, when our kids uh, get exposed to uh, with religion, religious beliefs, spiritual beliefs, whatever you want to refer to it as, that's that's one of my wife's problem, not anybody else's. It's not your it's not anybody's business. You know, what our what our kids believe in and don't believe in, whatever. That's our problem. Yeah, you know, it's on uh, whether to educate them on this or that. And I, I just thought he was overstepping his bounds a little bit, but he was yeah, you know, I, I think he meant well. So I just kinda let it go at first, and yeah, I think it's that, yeah, I was going to say, I know that right lane ends. Yeah, it's 83rd. So he goes, he starts talking about, uh, you know, starts showing uh, my daughter some, uh, some, I guess I would call them defects on his uh, lower left leg, I guess I would call it. And he had a bunch of, like, some kind of bumps all over it. Um, I, I was curious what they were, and then he starts explaining to her that uh, there, were, there were some varicose veins, and I guess I got aggravated by uh, by his, a past history of drug and alcohol abuse or something like that, or did yeah, I did drugs, whatever, and I I figured he was just going to be giving her some kind of pep talk about staying off of drugs, and here here's my uh, here's my first hand experience with it. Uh, you don't want to make the same mistakes that I did, kind of thing, but. He starts going into this uh, whole freaking diatribe about religion. I mean, uh, yeah, apparently he was a born again Christian. I assume he's one of those guys who uh, got locked up because of drug abuse or from and or from other stuff, and got his act cleaned up while he was there, and decided, oh, everybody else has to do the same thing that I'm doing, just because it made my life better. Has to Everybody has to do it because it'll make their life better too. Like, never mind the fact that I'm personally uh, born in a, uh, I was born and raised in a Baptist family, and my wife is born and raised in a Catholic family. Yeah, you know, we might not be, uh, yeah, we might not practice at all or regularly, whatever. But it doesn't mean we don't believe. Okay, right up here on the right side, uh, there's this blue and gray building here. This is. Uh, 
This is Thermal King. Uh, it is Sunday morning, just after 10 a.m. local time, so the gate is closed because they are not open today. So there is a there is a, a keypad here I can use to uh, get, to get the gate to open up. Now, uh, if you drive for JCT or Sierra England or whoever else, if you're using this place as a drop yard. Get with your dispatch. I am not going to give that information out here, obviously, uh, but I do need to retrieve the info. Uh, so anyway, I was like, okay, I'm getting bored with this guy. It's like, how long is this guy going to preach? You know, proselytize whatever to my daughter when he doesn't need to. We're, I mean, it's not like we aren't believers ourselves, and it's not like she doesn't get exposed to, uh, you know, the Bible or anything at all. Like, you know, um, my daughter actually regularly uh, has like uh, reads uh, like she like FaceTimes with my dad, and a lot, you know, if it's not uh, just reading regular books, sometimes it's. Uh, scripture stuff too so it's it's it it's not like she's not getting exposed to it but she's got short attention span and uh, autism whatever so you know what she retains yeah you know, not to mention she's young and you know, she doesn't retain exactly the most yeah you know, but she yeah you, know, you can tell that she uh, retained some um, yeah, that should have been enough right there. Hey, right? hey, she's saved already. Whatever it's, or you know, if that's what your concern is, and you know, you don't need to worry. You know, mind your business. Now, why do you? Why are you so? Uh, if you're a Bible thumper like that, I don't have a problem with. Hey, it's great if it makes your life better. Now we're gonna come all the way around over here to the uh, west end of the lot, and then we'll go to the north end and hook back up to my trailer, but I also need to uh, get uh, my the rest of my stuff out of the loaner truck, which you're gonna see here in a minute. There was nowhere for me to park it, so I kinda had to just invent my own place to put it. Yeah, this blue KW right in front of me is the truck I was using for my uh, for loaner. Uh, and there was nowhere to park it, there's a Dodge Ram over here, or actually a Chevy over there that was parked like shit, so it didn't do me any favors. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish swapping everything out. Yeah, I'm moving my, uh, I left my perishable foods and all that kind of stuff in there. Um, so I'm gonna get it transferred over to this, and then we'll get hooked up to the trailer, you know, do our pre trip, and get out of here. Alright guys, uh, we're done transferring uh, everything over from the loader truck back to this one. So I'm going to go ahead and creep over to the trailer, hook up to it. Yeah, it looks like that England trailer is still sitting there. Uh, yeah, I was, oh, now there's another, there's a JCT trailer in here that wasn't there when I got here. Probably because they couldn't, uh, they, they couldn't get it into the spot next, that's next to mine because uh, the England trailer in the way. All right, six six two six is my trailer number, which is right there. I think I need to go forward again. Yeah, drive charts are already passed, so go forward a little bit. Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to be sitting a little too low, but that's all right. So I can drop my airbags down, and uh, once it slides underneath on its own, uh, raise my airbags back up, and the landing gear will be up off the ground and easier to land to crank. Go forward real quick first. Should be good. Yeah, 
just paid their truck off recently. Don't know that I know them though. Let's take a look. Uh, no, I don't know them. Not familiar with that truck. Or maybe I am, but just don't know it. Oh. There we go. Okay. So from here, I'm going to start pre-tripping. Uh, I need to see if there's a dumpster around. Oh, yeah, there's a trash can over there by the outhouse. Okay, so I need to get rid of all the uh, the perishable food items that are in the fridge still and uh, replace them with the new stuff that I just bought. So we'll do all that, and when we're done pre-tripping, uh, we'll head out of here, right? All right, guys, I think we're ready to get rolling here. Uh, I'm still waiting on dispatch to uh, re uh, dispatch uh, change the dispatch from the um, yeah the load dispatch from that tractor to this one. Ah shit! I might I might have to back up some more and get my trailer going that way a little bit more so um, I have more room for tail swing. Come out this way. Give myself plenty of room there. Now we're over by the front end of this singling trailer, so it should be good. Yeah, should be yeah, there's lots of room here. I don't have to worry at all about the tail swing. All I gotta do is clear him with my tandems and clear the loaner truck with my tandems, and we're good. I'm not gonna sit here and keep waiting for this batch to uh respond to my message though. I don't know if maybe they're at lunch or something or or what. We'll just go ahead and get moving. Uh, at this point it's too late for if they want me to log back into that truck and uh, yeah, I already sent a macro 13 in from that truck but it wasn't logged into it. But it did show that it was sent so I think someone on dispatch end just hasn't gotten to it yet. They, it's, it's a weekend though. Uh, we only have a limited number of uh, dispatchers working in the office. And they got the entire fleet to deal with. So uh, yeah, one, DM, uh, one weekend dispatcher handles like three different fleets at, uh, all at once. So yeah, depending on how, uh, they can get extremely busy at times and they tend to not want to deal with phone calls or anything like that or might take them a little bit of time to get to something or they might forget whatever so I'm not gonna worry about it I have plenty of fuel I can get all the way I should be able to get all the way to the Texas line with what fuel I already have on hand uh, that would be my biggest concern would be uh, when it's time to get fuel uh, as long as the load is dispatched onto my uh, onto this truck by then, uh, everything will be hunky dory. Otherwise, if not, I can always you know, either tell them, "Hey, I need this uh, load moved to my truck," or I'll have to buy the fuel to use in the the recovery truck number, and it'll still get charged to me. It'll just it's you'll like see two different sets of. Uh, um, Incomes and expense, uh, yeah, uh, revenues and expenses on the settlement when you're in a loaner truck. All right, so one of the things I did notice with that loaner truck is, you know, those are 12 speed automatics, mine's a 10 speed manual. I think I understand now, I uh, might understand why that truck drives me crazy with the shifting. You know, because for one, sometimes I don't think it picks the appropriate gear for the situation. Uh, also, it, yeah, like I said, I think I mentioned earlier, sometimes it feels like I'm watching paint dry 
waiting for it to come. I go into the next gear before it'll let me do anything. And a lot of times, also, I'll smash the throttle, you know, put the pedal to the floor. I expect to get a reaction immediately, not two seconds later. And the other problem I have, uh, well, actually, uh, why I think it's so slow is because uh, because it has more gears. I think the gears are shorter. So I can't move the truck at its highest speed before it wants to shift gears, as uh, I might do with this truck. Now on this truck, I normally always start out in second gear. If I'm on flat terrain, I'll go ahead and double, uh, I call, uh, not double clutch, but uh, skip shift. So I might start out in second gear, and then I'll end up in fourth, and then sixth, and then eight, uh, and then once I'm up to six, whatever, then I'll start single shifting. You know, to seven, eight, nine, and ten, something along that line. A bobtail, I might know, I might skip shift all the way up to wherever, whatever speed I'm going to run at, or what gear I'm going to top out at. Um, so, yeah, there are little nuances there, I guess I would say that, or why I, I'm not a fan of auto shift. As I say it's it's great for other people. I just I'm not a fan of it at all, not in the least bit. Uh, I will tolerate it. Actually, that truck I was just in, um, overall, I liked it pretty well. Uh, there were a couple of little issues with it. Yeah, it was one of my uh, one of my good friends who also drives a T680. Yeah, that's what the loaner truck was. Um, he did say that it's who's this? 40 Delta 4039. Uh, he didn't say that something was weird about uh, cause my because uh, when I was using that truck, the jake brakes didn't want to work at all unless I pressed and held the service brake pedal in or if I used uh, cruise control. Yeah, I set my cruise speed to a lower speed, but case in point, like yesterday, I was going down the Cajon Pass and in heavy traffic. Not the right... Not the appropriate situation for cruise control, but I'm going down a steep grade and I want my jake brakes to work. I shouldn't have to sit there and hold my service brake pedal down to, to get the jake brakes to do their job. And it turned out, uh, well, according to my friend Daniel, uh, his truck, uh, he, you know, he just has to tap the brake pedal and it should work. So the fact that I had to hold the brake pedal, he said there was something wrong with it. So we're going to head back over to the Loop 202, work our way back over to Chandler, get back on uh, eastbound 10, and then it's just straight on down I-10 all the way to Florida from here. We're going to be taking this load to Orlando, Florida. Uh, the customer is called Roma of Florida. I've not done any research on it yet. I just know that it is right off the Florida Turnpike. And it's, uh, South John something Boulevard Parkway whatever whatever hell that Parkway is called right there off of that, right where those two intersect uh, just north of the Turnpike and just east of that South John whatever road uh, pretty easy to find on the map actually if you know that part now that's where we're we going though it is due on May fifth uh, I want to say at nine thirty in the morning or something like that. Don't recall. Uh, it's about 2,160 or so miles from here to the customer. Should take me three full shifts and then uh, partial fourth. I estimate about 66 hours total from start to finish to get there, which would put me there sometime in the morning hours of May 5th, or May 4th, I mean. So there's a possibility I might see about swapping off this load. Yeah, you know, I might get a good ETA when I do my 30 minute break and if it looks like I'm running a good day ahead of schedule, I'll go ahead and you know, send in the macro to say I'm running ahead and that way if, uh, if anyone needs, needs something to get home with or perhaps is, needs help getting their own load delivered on time or something, they can possibly help with that. Anyway, yeah, good to be back in this truck. 
for more than one reason I get my uh, my stick shift back yeah not to mention the truck that I that I'm working to pay off um, very close to paying it off actually uh, my balance is down to about 7500 now and I'll have that done in uh, by July uh, I do have uh, an arrearage on my maintenance account though that I'll have to uh, cover so I figured once I'm done paying off the truck, I will probably bump up my maintenance account payments from 15 cents to 40 cents a mile. And that'll help uh, that'll help pay off the maintenance account in rearage a lot faster. And get the title of the truck in my name pretty soon. And you know, hopefully before the year ends. See how it goes. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're getting on 202. I'm going to go ahead and end this one now. Uh, yeah, there's probably more I, need, I needed to cover, but I think that's plenty. Uh, so I don't want the video to be too long. You guys are more engaged. If I keep them relatively uh, reasonably short at least. So, I will bid you all adieu, and uh, we'll probably see you guys in Orlando or... I swap somewhere else, alright? Uh, you guys all have a great day, and yeah, we'll see you on the next one.